Wow, I almost lit my face on fire. Hey, everybody. It's Wednesday afternoon, and you know what that means. Time to let the cat out so she doesn't piss on the rug. It's also time to watch live with the Cigar Advisors. That's us. Four crazy dudes locked in a room with a fifth crazy dude behind the phone camera. My name is Tommy Z-Man, and I'm here with three of my yes. That's my name. That is my birth name is Z-Man. And I'm here with three of my cohorts. I like to more think of them as horts. But I guess additional horts would mean cohorts. What a show today! Look at the giveaway. Today's giveaway is this very cool Avo, this speaker. It's a mini speaker that hooks up USB port stuff and hooks up is it a USB? I'm hoping yeah. it is. Yes, it's a USB. Sure. And it hooks up <laughs> Universal Service something. And it hooks up to your computer. Or if you're like that androgynous girl in the commercial, you say, What's a computer? Well there you go. What a show today. I'm gonna tell you how to win this in a second. Today's cigar is a beauty. It's Avo Cinco Nicaragua. Nicaragua! And this is so good. This is box pressed. This is dark, delicious, and beautiful. Much like Gary. All right, he's actually not dark. Only when he tans, when he goes to the tanning bed. Fred's more of an orange. Fred goes orange. I'm pasty. Fred is pasty, but he turns total orange. He looks like one of the Jersey Shore guys. So today's show, okay, so we just said what this is about, and now we're done. And that's it for today's show. Thank you for I know coming, that. everyone. Be sure to get a mint on the way out. Yes. <laughs> and don't take the pens. Yeah, right? why, I hate when people walk pens. out with the pens. That's why we have strings on them. Fred gets crazy when you take the pens. All right, so we're giving away this beautiful little speaker. This is a very cool deal. This is from the good people at Avo, and it's uh, I know it's a special with a deal today that John's going to tell you about. But somebody's going to win this for free at the end of the show, and the way you win is to put on screen your answer to my question. And this is actually a very good question. And the question is, a, Gary, this is a very good question. Gary, Gary is in disbelief, but he shouldn't be because I'm loaded with good questions. Um, I am loaded. Best, what is the best cigar that you have smoked so far in 2018? What is it? What is the best? See, Gary said it was a good question. Very good. Oh, jeez. Now, Tommy, will the winner get to carry off our boxes? Yes, yes. That'd be great. Um, We'll explain that later. But uh, the, so you can win this. So I want you to put on screen right now. And I'm going to repeat it a few times because people come in all different times during the show. Uh, what is the best cigar that you've smoked in 2018 so far? I think we're going to go around the room. I want you guys to think about that. The other people that are in the room, I'm talking to imaginary people. Guys, think of your answers because I'm going to have to think about that too. So, yeah. yeah, I know. we got to go back and think. Wow. What have we smoked? Tell me, what have you, we reviewed? You've stunned me. I don't know what to say here because it's just... Well, that was a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not sure what to, uh, you know... Mm. I'm not, I am not sure what to do now. Well, well, you don't have to right. answer yet, John. I need to percolate on John decked out in his fancy nautica. Yeah, oh. yeah, I'm all... Uh, Where and he got at the uh, Casual Wednesday. I just went down at the Commons uh, thing down on Root Com Whatever. The Commons thing at the Root Whatever. Sure. This is I love John that place. Pula. Now, John's very important here. John has. Uh, I like to think so. He is. Uh, he likes to collect <laughs> stuff. He has a rare collection of used pilgrim hats from when he lived up mm -hmm. in New England. And, you know it, baby. Uh, it's I looked at the Beckett pilgrim pilgrim hat guide, and mm -hmm. I know a few of those you have are worth at least sixteen bucks. Well, you know what? I buy in bulk. Plymouth Rock Emporium? Right. Can't beat it. This is going nowhere, so I'm going to go over to the professor himself. You look at him. He's in deep thought. Show them the deep thought face. Holy God. This is Professor Gary Korb. And uh, Gary uh, doesn't collect anything. He collects uh, gorgeous women. We know that as a fact. And uh, his, basement's a mess. his basement's a mess. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are several chained to the heater. Clean up every night. And I didn't mean that. I made that up. The only thing he's got chained to the heater is a couple of uh, blow-up dolls. I think it's those old Miss Magic Mounds. So, uh, remember those? Like this one. No. <laughs> Not like the new sex robots. 
Now, if you guys have seen those, those are unbelievable. Tommy's oh, research yeah. is expensive. Yeah. Oh, I have research. That's good fodder. For stuff. <laughs> Getting one for and, the room. Um, speaking of sex dolls, the parlor room. <laughs> speaking of sex dolls, we have Frederick Lunt of the Schenectady Lunts. I like Schenectady. Sure. Now, That's Fred's nice connected. Get, get kind of head a little this way. Fred's hair is a little. What do you want me to put? You, well, you've you got this. My head here. You you've got this pose? wisp going up, like uh, like you ran out of pomade on your last stroke of your head. Wow. This one. And it's windy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, your hair. it's windy. So what do you want? What do you want? It's windy. Oh, yeah. no. Is it a little blurry on screen? Do you guys see that? Looks a little weird, a little blurry. Did you get some smudges? Are we getting some bad bad mojo going on? Does it look good? You got your fingerprints all over the lens? Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody complaining, so just move along. All right, so who in this group is going to answer the question, the best cigar that you've had so far in 2018? Man, i got to really think about that. Uh, but you need to tell me out there in listening land. Listening land. Yes, listening, viewing land. Whatever you're doing, stop now and put on screen what your best cigar. Gary, look at Gary's thought, deep thought. Holy God! You can fry I, I really am thinking about it because I haven't smoked that many either. I, I'm really thinking about I, it too. I think I'm gonna go with my father, either the La Palencia or yeah, the Antigua Dad. I think, I, think I, I think I'm gonna say the La Palencia. Really? Yeah. Ooh, but the Antigua Dad was like really close second. There's a lot though. This is up there too. I gotta <sighs> say, the Abu Nicaragua is definitely up there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about what's that new San Andreas Romeo that we've had the other day. That the Rocky kicks ass. Oh, the Romeo San Andreas. Romeo San Andreas. Romeo by I don't Romeo know if that's the really best I've had in 2018. I'm going to think more, but that cigar has some amazing uh, Maduro sweetness to it. Real good. Now, John and Gary, do you have anything I, for I, us? I, I, I was just checking on some of my weekend cigars, and I, I probably... I have to say, maybe the Aging Room Quattro Maduro. Aging Room? Yeah, Aging Room Quattro Maduro, yeah. I don't think we all love Maduro. <laughs> well. Oh, you yeah. know what? Um, Dustin, oh. Dustin Reese has the Pappy Van Winkle, which is that, damn good. That was good. Up. You know what it was? I know what it was. You know what? Probably the most interesting cigar. How about let's go with interesting? Okay. Was what were we smoking with Ernesto Perez Carrillo when oh, he was here? Oh, oh, yeah. the, the Encore. The Encore. That was great. You know what? You may have hit it five bells for Pula. Five bells for me right that now. That was six Look bells. At that. You got I'll, six I'll bells. Take six. Nobody I'll, take, gets I'll take all the bells. bells. Nobody on my show gets six bells. I'll take all the bells. S suddenly it's my show. It is but, his bell. Uh, uh, <laughs> it is his bell. But six bells. I'm going to give Pula a seventh bell. That's right. Because we did, if you guys, now what do they go to to see those videos we did with uh, Ernesto Perez well, Carrillo? We're not done with them yet. We're not done with them we're yet. Not okay, they're not up yet. We had from the great EPC, Ernesto Perez Carrillo, and he was here last week. Was it last week or week before? Two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. And we sat at the bar at Leaf Cigar <laughs> Bar Restaurant here, and that's attached to famous smoke shop in Eastern PA, and we did a couple of great interviews with him. And what, what a wonderful gentleman. I yeah. mean... You know, I've met almost everybody in this business who's a manufacturer. He's the first time I ever met him, and what a great guy. And um, he had my car towed, so I don't think he liked me very much. Um, I know he liked John, though. I know he had a thing for Gary, and Freddie just thought it was pretty disgusting. Um, but, uh, no, I'm serious. But the E.P. Carras Carrillo, his new cigar is... Encore and Holy he has, he has a and the Elencos. But this one is the Encore series. And did you you didn't do that one for top new cigars yet, Fred? Did you? The Encore. Friday. That, this Friday. Okay. No, wait, that that was two weeks ago. The I think the Elencos. All right. So two editions. The, the Encore. What did we have? The Majestic. I think Majestic. was it was a it was a box press or a soft box press yeah. robusto. Yeah. I don't know. This thing's I running slow as hell. So it's a five and three eighths by fifty two. Uh, it's a hundred dollar box. And actually, they are we are available now. But that was uh, he, I just saw a video with him, with Ernesto Perez Carrillo, and with um, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Um, Jose, sorry, Jose oh. um, 
why am I going Jose completely blank? You're drawing a Blanco. I am drawing a Blanco. That's nice. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, our John, so our, Jose Blanco and, and EPC were together in a, doing a video, uh, and they were talking about the encore, and this is brand new, and yeah. it, 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 probably one of the most alluring aromas I've ever detected yeah, on a yeah. cigar. I, I gotta video. say that I think that's the best cigar I've had in 2018. It really is. That was that damned good. Um, now, our very own Umberto Gonzalez, uh, Mr. Cajones himself, <laughs> says that that's not a fair question. And then he gives a very long-winded, anally retentive answer to why it's not a fair question. And I just think everyone should avoid whatever he said there. I, I, does anybody agree with me there? Anybody? What were we talking about? Oh, that Umberto Cajones. What did Umberto say? It's very long-winded, and it's very, uh, it's very, uh... Yeah, he's a blowhard. Yeah, blowhardish. Jose, yes. can you yes. see? <laughs> Normally, he's a lovable, uh, large Hispanic man, but today he's just blowhardish, as Fred said, yes. So, but he is the maker of the... He is, he's the man behind cojones. He's breaking your ball, that's nice. That's a, a cigar that's very good. So I'm going to give him some love there. Cojones. Same as, you know, how you would spell bullies in Spanish. Cojones. Now... To stop talking about Umberto's uh, cojones, we're going to talk about this speaker. This is from Avo, and Avo is the cigar of the day. John's going to tell you about a special on that in a second. Now, you can win this really cool mini speaker, USB port, and uh, uh, this beautiful speaker is available to those who put on screen what their favorite cigar of 2018 is so far. I know that's an unfair question, Umberto. I know, little fella. But you know what? But, but, but we have to ask these things because, you know, inquiring minds want to know. So. Except no one's inquired. So. <laughs> no one's inquired. And now there's even a Cajones Cigars. Uh, I wonder who that could possibly be uh, putting up comments. So, uh, and, and I'll go on the record and say the Cajones, which is available here at Famous. Am I correct about that? At the oh, smoke, yeah, at yeah, the sure. You can get them online. Is that on online yeah. now? Yeah. Limited supply. Oh, limited, limited uh, supply. I'm going to tell yeah, you. You charge double. No, Umberto knows. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not it's preaching to the choir here because none of these jackasses can sing. That is a hell of a cigar. So I did my duty here today. So yeah. anyway, I did my duty. So you want to win this? Damn speaker. Put on screen your favorite cigar of 2018 so far. Uh, the guys here are raving about the Encore by E.P. Carrillo. And John, we're smoking the yes. uh, Nicaragua, the Cinco whatever. Cinco Nicaragua. Cinco Nicaragua? Yes. Yeah. Now, tell them about this cigar and tell them what right. kind of deal we got on this. Brian, here is the Avo Cinco Cinco. Here is the Avo <laughs> Cinco Nicaragua, but that's fine. A veritable stew of premium tobaccos with this Havo. Mm. Uh, it was, I believe, released last year, or it might even be two oh, no, years old by now. Two years, yeah. So inside, on the inside, it is sweet, earthy Nicaraguan tobacco from Ometepe. Mm. It is Peruvian Olancho. Oh, yeah. It is Dominican San Vicente with a, a very smooth character. That's a yeah, Dominican, that or that is a, a proprietary Davidoff leaf. That is true. Uh, and it also has Dominican Olor in Piloto, mm -hmm. and it is all box-pressed, uh, which we've talked about here on the show, but it is then wrapped nice in a, an, an Ecuador Connecticut wrapper. And if you want the whole thing in a nutshell, Nicaragua, Peru, Dominican, under Equ uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. Yeah, they've been doing this a lot lately with the Duaravo releases. Yes. They use a lot of different tobaccos and some proprietary tobacco. It, it makes a very complex cigar. Yeah. And and this is oh, already, I mean, that's not even an inch. Earth, yep, I'm wood, yep, yep. some spice, yep. but again, another one that has a very alluring aroma. Right, and you can taste that um, tepe in there, too, that, that oh, heartier yeah. leaf. Yeah. You know, but, that's, but sweet, too. It's right? kind of, yeah, it's got a lot of... A lot of it's kind of like a, a baking spice to it, like a nutmeg. Okay, get that a little bit now. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm only a little bit in. What else? What, what else are you finding? Because you're, you're look at your this guy. Like uh, this guy like a dark like chocolate. Yeah, I started yeah. before you. Dude. Get off my. Yeah. Leather, Stop breaking my cojones. Leather, earth, and pepper. That's what leather, I'm getting. Yeah. Leather, leather, earth. It's very sweet. Very okay, sweet. Very woody. Earthy. Yes. Fred, 
I get like a dried fruit, and this is the second one I've had, and I taste like a dried fruit, and I think that's the sweetest. Now, John says I'm a dried fruit, and I think I'm a very wet fruit. So, I'm a very fruit. steamy, moist fruit. You're moist! Fruit. Word of the day. What's interesting, John? Moist. What's interesting? You cut yours across the top, and I did a, uh, a uh, V cut. Oh, really? Mine. Okay. So it just seemed to be appropriate for this Cuban yes. press, you know, that they're doing. I have given so, up on the. I have given up on the V cut. I don't know. I'm like into it lately again. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah, we, we kind of come and we go. Yeah. And uh, I have gone on the V cut for quite a while. Yeah, it used to be really high. Uh, that was that was my go to for the longest time. That's right. Time. But, uh, that's right. Eh. Back there, it's annoying. But this is work. This is working well. <laughs> but that's fine. So all right. So that's what's inside. So Tommy, you wanted to know about the deal. Avo Synchro Nicaragua. We come in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sizes, ranging from Cigarillo up to 6x60 Special Toro, today's deal. Uh, if, you, if you liked that uh, speaker that was on Tommy's desk, you buy a box, you get that speaker, along with four more Avo Synchro Nicaragua mm -hmm. Toros, like we're smoking today. A nice semi-box press. It is close to $100 in value. Yours free with your box Break purchase. Box. And uh, that deal, I think, is good on like five of those sizes. It doesn't roll with the Toro Tubo because it's a different sized box and it does not account for the Cigarillos. So, uh, Robusto, Short Robusto, Special Toro, or Toro, we throw those in for an extra $100 in value, four more cigars, plus mm -hmm. that, yeah, that fancy you. Uh, you throw in extra Lava speaker. Like That's right. Hey, Angel Ortiz writes, you guys are awesome. Oh, yeah, isn't that nice? Nice? See? Five bells for Angel. Angel. Gets us. Or is it yeah. on hell? I don't know. Angel the... gets us. Yes, of course That's he gets why. us. Um, yeah, I, I want to say hi to my buddy Sanj. Patel has just joined us. What's up, Sanj? Jersey's finest. And uh, people people are loving the, uh, they love the Jersey's V cut. Jersey's finest. You make him sound like a hoagie. He is. He's, <laughs> he's, he is Sanj is, is a hoagie that everybody loves. So uh, now let's see. Oh, wow. Kong Fams is, is in the house. When storing cigars, do you take the plastic wrapper off or keep it on? I, when I'm lighting, I keep it on. I tend, I I tend to keep it as a snack in my desk. You know, just like a bowl of cellophane. It's good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, half off. Half off? Half off. Like pants. Just like pants, yeah. yeah. I love and where broad, uh, I love to go to places where uh, stores where men's pants are half off. It makes me feel Thanks. very, uh, Thanks, very Thanks. ashamed. Oh, so you, you, okay, you, I'm glad you finally have feel, a, have admitted it in shame. public. Okay. So Robbie's saying he loves the the uh, Punch Grand Prix Nicaragua, which is a mm. great cigar, very full bodied, uh, dark chocolate leather espresso. That we've reviewed that on Cigar Advisor. If you guys go to CigarAdvisor.com. You're going to see all our stories, articles, reviews, and then on Facebook, if you go to the Cigar Advisor, not Facebook, uh, what did that thing call? YouTube. YouTube. If you go to YouTube, you're going to see a lot of videos and reviews and uh, 101s and questions we answered, so that's CigarAdvisor.com. If you're new to the show, the four of us are uh, editors and writers for Cigar Advisor Magazine Online. And we're hosted here at Famous Smoke Shop. That's famous-smoke.com, the world's greatest online cigar store. There's no doubt about that. Don't even get confused by other people. So there you go. So now we're going to go to Mr. Gary Corb. Now, Gary's the professor for a reason. <laughs> and it's because he stole a diploma that says he's a professor. That's right. But he knows a hell of a lot about cigars. He's been in the industry a long time, so we've deemed him that that moniker. These are big words I'm using. They say to talk on a sixth grade level. I think I've got it up around ninth grade, so I know I've got to dumb this down a little bit. But Gary's going to tell you something that you don't hear about ever, and it's important. And it's about cleaning something. Uh, it's important to clean that thing. And Gary's going to tell you what that thing is. Professor? Alrighty then, here we go. So, we're going to learn today how to clean your cutter because your cutter can get really goopy after a while and it can sometimes affect the way it cuts your cigars. Now this one is a uh, what they call a perfect cutter from Monte Cristo. What's, what's also a little goopy about this is that some, uh, some tobacco, yeah goopy, some tobacco gets stuck inside underneath but it's very easy to, easy to get that out. But if you look closely there's a lot of stuff over here. Hold on, Ryan, I just want to get my little pointer. 
And you can see right there, there's a bunch of stuff that's kind of collecting. And um, what you want to do is you want to clean that up. Now, does Tommy, what's your cutter look like? Maybe we'll clean your cutter. All right, we'll hand this over. This is the Lotus, what is that, the Jaws cutter? Yeah, it's got like a serrated edge. Yeah. And um, I have not cleaned that cutter. And you use it a lot. Okay, actually, it's not that dirty. It's got, a lot of, it's got a lot of schmutz inside of it. Though, I but do anyway, too. But, we're, <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do it. Now, what you need is some isopropyl alcohol. Gary, are you alcohol. saying you're going to remove my schmutz? I'm going to remove your... I already removed the schmutz. Now we're going to clean it. Whoa. So what you do is you need the... Um, you need some alcohol and you need some Q-tips. And Tommy gave me these Q-tips from his makeup kit. And um, we're going to take a Q-tip. We're going to put some alcohol on it and basically what you do is you got a good shot of this Ryan hey camera guy you got a good shot of this <laughs> and you're just gonna do this and look at that see it's already coming off and then you want to clean the inside too now, I really can't get underneath that but then look at that look at that nonsense right that's pretty nasty and then I'm gonna push this in a little bit and there's some schmutz over here too. Push it in, Gary. Push so it. So that's so that's coming out pretty good now, and it really it really is a really good thing to do because, and I just do it right on the blade too because I don't have to worry about cutting through this cotton. You just kind of get everything out there. So that's one way to do it. Let's see how we do with Tommy's. So, uh, let's do Tommy's, and then. Uh, so Gary, again, yeah. what's the importance of the importance this? of it is just that after a while things get really really dirty. And if you can a, see, it looks pretty. If funny. you're a heavy cigar smoker and you use the same cutter all the time, it's going to get really nasty. And um, Much like you, Gary. That's right. <laughs> and you want to keep that nice and clean. So, to actually, Tommy, this is not that dirty. I think you only use this when you're here at the office. So that's right. probably why it's not as dirty as well, maybe a, a cutter used at home. It's not a turd cutter, so I keep it right. clean. So there you go. So you can give that back to Tommy. Well, and I don't know what kind of stuff you smoke. So. so really all you, you need is a... Thing, oh, by the way... If you don't have any isopropyl alcohol or, or ethyl alcohol, whatever, you you can use uh, vodka. Vodka juice works very well. What about well. Dewar's white label? Uh, that'll work too. So that's it, really, and um, that's the way I see it. And now back to you, Zena. And you could see that the Q-tip was pretty like gunky on uh, Gary's thing there, and. Uh, this is an important thing. You didn't know about cleaning your cutter, did you? Did you, people? You didn't know that. Now, Daniel says we're always keeping it classy. That's exactly it. Kirk Lawless says, son of a bitch. I learn something new every show. Oh, that's nice. Umberto says it looked like I was cleaning my ears. That's pretty, pretty accurate. Actually. <laughs> Jeremy says that Gary should get 10 bells for handling your cutter so Oh, man. Oh. You got to give him a ticket. Were there any curlies on that cutter? Oh, my God. Dude. No. A, lot of, oh. a lot of tobacco bits. In now, there. if any of you crazy bastards want to win a really cool mini speaker from the people at Avo, you have to put on screen right now, because I know some of you guys came in late, because you're just saying hi. Uh, what is your favorite cigar of 2018? You know, it doesn't have to be a new cigar. I had said that before. But what is your favorite cigar this year? We've got a major consensus in here that it's the new Encore by E.P. Carrillo. The experience Inesto added to it. Perez. Uh, Jerry Jones, yeah. not of the Dallas Cowboy, Jerry Jones, says, Wild Turkey works. Um, but what about the booze? Does that work, too? Kip Stevens says, hi. And... Uh, Leon Davis says, left-handed metric are my favorite cutters. Huh. That makes total sense. I'm going to have to think about that for a while. Mm -hmm. So now we're going we're gonna to do something we haven't done in a while because there is some cigar news up here, and Mr. John Pulo is going to tell you about something about, mm -hmm. you know those th three really dirty letters, the FDA? Go F yourself, D-A. Well, there's something that the cigar industry is trying to stop these... Uh, this Nazi regime from doing, and John's going to tell you all about it. So, your best bet is if you want a pretty concise listing and, and some extra details of what some of the things we're talking about, we have an FDA hub at fda.famous-smoke.com, and we're going to have Corey put up the link there too, so that he can go ahead and, and uh, make it easy for you to click through and get all the news. And one of the new things that came through is something about the cigar industry asking 
there's a, see, there's a lawsuit going on. Once the deeming rule was filed in August of what, 16? I mean, it's already mm -hmm. been a year, almost coming up on two years mm -hmm. at the end of the summer. Uh, the lawsuit that was filed by the premium cigar industry, everybody got together and sued the FDA to go ahead and, and put certain stops on some of the things that they're trying to implement with the deeming rule and they're facing different things in. Well, one of the things that came up was warning labels as well as user fees. And user fees are something that are paid by the manufacturers when they're going ahead and doing testing and when they're going ahead and rolling out new brands and licensing. And the cigar warning labels were going to be increased in size and put on everything from hats and t-shirts that you might get in an event and they would have to cover 30% of the size. And of course, you know, the, the problem is there's hardly a standard for any of these things. Well, just about a week and a half ago, the FDA again issued some new notices that they said they wanted to do some more rulemaking. And the court was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Because, you know, you guys deemed this rule a year and a half ago, and, like, the ball keeps moving. And, yeah. you know, are you going to continue to make all these extra rules just because you think you have the right to do those things? And now they're seeking additional commentary from people in the industry and people like you who are just, uh, who are cigar enthusiasts or just who enjoy cigar once in a while, even if you don't get into the mm -hmm. where with all. Uh, but they also want scientific data related to the patterns of use and the health impact of premium cigars. Huh. And that's going to help them further inform the agency's new regulatory policies because they're now re-examining some of the things that they put in this initial deeming rule mm -hmm. because it's just like, well, you know what? The, and, and, and let me not shell it. Maybe they came out with the deeming rule a little too soon, mm. and they didn't really think through some of the impact of some of these things. Yeah. And, you know, maybe the concern is that the deeming rule concerning premium cigars could be restructured by the FDA all by their own without asking for additional commentary, and they're just going to continue to make stuff up as they go along. Yeah, leave so, it to the government, too. A lot of arguing back and forth, and you know, there was some of the stuff that some of the back and forth between the court and the lawyer for uh, the FDA, and and basically the the judge who has yet to file an opinion in the case has demonstrated that he is weary of getting ahead of the FDA, which is shown they have shown and have basically admitted they did not necessarily have all the evidence they needed when they published the final deeming rule. And the cigar industry believes that the advance notice of public rulemaking that they just issued a week and a half ago mm -hmm. pretty much says. You're right, Judge. They did jump the gun on this one. So if you'd like to read more about this and some of the other things that are going on with the FDA, uh, the, the lawsuit continues, but go to the FDA hub at FamousSmoke.com. We'll have the link in the comments section so you can brief yourself on all the important, and we've boiled it down a bite-sized bit so you can kind of digest the information easy and quick and catch yourself up to speed on what's happening with this whole FDA business and the deeming rule and how it's affecting your ability to enjoy a good cigar. Tommy? Very good, gentlemen. Very well said by Mr. Pulo. Hey, has anybody noticed that Chase uh, Vicaro is not here this very week? Very quiet. Yeah, very quiet without the the barbs and the and the uh, the wicked, nasty stuff that he says to us and hurts our feelings every week. What's going on? They talk about camera guy. Just talk amongst yourselves. There, we don't need to do a show. That's okay. Ah, so. We're, we're giving you, Gary gives you how to clean your cutter. John gives you the cigar news. Fred's going to give us some Styling information tips. about a uh, contest yeah. that's about to start from our friends at, uh, what's the Indian Motorcycle Indian cigar? Motorcycle Cigars. So we had those on the show last week. They also make Debonair. And they partnered up with the actual Indian Motorcycle. And they're giving away a $10,000 motorcycle. Uh, you can go up to uh, their site, it's online, and I believe it is on page. Uh, do we have that on our site? We, we have it somewhere, right? We have the link. I believe, I'm pretty sure Corey can post the link, but we have it up here. When does that start? It starts the 7th, so Friday? No, Saturday. It starts on Saturday. You yeah, go online, IndianMotorcycle.com slash sweepstakes is the link. Could be. I guess and yeah, don't forget that he's here tomorrow, so you can ask him. That's true. So the owner is coming too famous tomorrow if you're in the area, and he will be here to show off these beautiful cigars. Yes, $24.99 a ticket, light appetizers, cocktail up to eight bucks, three cigars from Debonair, like Fred was talking about, and Indian Motorcycle. It's a guy by the name of Phil Zangi, and he was with Rocky back in the day, mm -hmm. and he has uh, brought back a little slice of Americana with Indian Motorcycle, and Debonair, Fred, you'd say, uh, we'd say Debonair is kind of a totally different feel from 
from the uh, Indian, Indian motorcycle, yeah, right? I mean, what, what do you? Yes. What's, your, what's your sense about debonair? Well, debonair, it's a bit more rounded. It's a bit, it's a bit richer. It's, uh, I think it's a little bit pricier. It's a little bit like a little more refined tobacco. And the Indian motorcycle is a bit more like an everyday kind of cigar. You know, you could probably smoke it on an Indian motorcycle if you wanted to. So, here's the link. That'd be impressive. Indian, oh, I, I've seen guys do it. <laughs> IndianCigars.com slash sweepstakes. There's a bike. It may not be in that color or whatever, you know. But uh, if you're into motorcycles, check out the contest. Look it up. Or come to Leaf Cigar Bar tomorrow night. Maybe Sweet Talk Phil Zang a little bit. If you can get an inside run on that motorcycle giveaway. Plus three cigars from Debonair and Indian Motorcycle. Free cigars and cigar swag with your box purchase. Tickets still available. It is under $25 and it is a nice... Two-hour evening starts at 6 p.m. tomorrow night here at Famous Smoke Shop and Leaf Cigar Bar. Tommy? Now, if you guys love us out there, and a lot of you are saying you love us, Brian says for us to keep up the great work, that's what we do. We bring you this, and we bring you this every week. Would you please do me a favor? First, I'd like you to click like that you liked the show, the post, the broadcast. But guys, share the show. Share it right now on your Facebook feeds, on your... Uh, Twitter, on your cigar groups and everything, share this show. That actually helps us a lot. It gets the word out to more people. Facebook's algorithm tends to like that and shares it to more people because they're being very... Sh Facebook's being very stingy about that. And I know their owner is in a little bit of uh, hot water lately, so we're not going to get into that, but... <laughs> <laughs> so that was Nelson. Uh, Nelson. Nelson. Is it not Nelson from it's the Nelson. Simpsons? Not months. Yeah. I know like, we're, we're making fun of Facebook while using their service for free. There yeah. you go. That's, that's what we do. Oh, you're yeah. talking and about Mark Zuckerberg. I was only half paying attention. I, I said the <laughs> owner of Facebook. Yes, the well, guilty. I, I, I kind of tuned you out. Sorry. <laughs> Can we get a shout out for Chris <laughs> Dot, who's <laughs> watching? He's having an event here, um, I think Ooh. next month. Chris Dot. Who? Organizing an event. For <laughs> Who is Chris Dot? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Who's Chris Dot? <laughs> Tell us. Is he in the Department of Transportation? <laughs> Department. Chris, Chris from the Pennsylvania uh, Department of Transportation will having an event here. I think it's uh, the birth of his 12th child, uh, Ring Rat. <laughs> Ring Rat, I hear, is a lovely little feller. And he'll be giving away very, very bad cigars, is what I'm hearing. So, uh, <laughs> but I hear the macaroni and cheese bites are going to kill. So, oh, Chris is here. What's yeah. up, Chris? Oh, not Department of Transportation, but his last name is actually He's Dot. Dot. <laughs> wow. Now, Mario is in the house, and Mario's our friend from uh, Western Canada, and he loves us all, but he loves Fred particularly. He's asking, where are you, Fred? I'm over here. How can you miss the stank <laughs> of that hair gel? All right, get on my face. The stank of that stuff he puts in his head. Now, you can't miss that. So I want you I, guys I, now I to... I comment on what goes in your hair. You can start <laughs> asking us good, questions, and we advisors for the next 20 minutes or so will answer, 15 minutes, will answer your questions pertaining to cigars. Heavy metal, heavy metal music, I will answer questions. I will answer questions on uh, pre-70s National Hockey League action. And I will also answer questions on Gary's, the women he collects. You know, he collects women. The real burning questions. <laughs> pre-70s hockey, yeah. metal, and Gary's trail of women. That's great. What a trifecta of expertise. $3 so, for the trifecta. That's great. So we have a, we have a couple of uh, questions rolling in. Actually, Michael Philip Mitchell, Gary, he wants to know how you feel about your humidor flying off the roof. Oh, well, you know. You want to explain that to people who don't well, know? You know, it we had this humidor here in, uh, it's been here a long time, right? Oh, Longer yeah. than you. At least 20 years. Oh, years. easily. I've been here six years, and that's been, uh, that easily predates me by a couple years. To the, uh, to the wow. Hayward uh, Hayward Tenny Days? Hayward Tenny Days, yes. In fact, Hayward used it mostly. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, well, what are you going to do? You know, Fred is a little... Uh, Getting a little carried away. Little yeah, carried I away. got a little rambunctious. Uh, you you know. got excited. Tell me put some so. Irish whiskey in my coffee that morning. Yeah. And a little salty. Yeah, a little, but I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the Garrett video. Gary took a parking though, space, yeah. and I was a little uh, upset. Well, that's fine. So there you go. So if you want to, if you yeah, have, if you have not seen it, 
So uh, we, we decided to do an impact test of how different humidors perform. And typically that's something that's reserved for travel humidors. Uh, but like Fred said, you get a little carried away, and uh, if you want to see what happens to a desktop model humidor, or yeah. actually a nice, a nice case version mm -hmm. uh, with wood and windows and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and what happens when it's pitched off a two and a half story roof, go to cigaradvisor.com. You can either look it up on our YouTube page or you can go and see the entire test of our travel humidor impact uh, test. Uh, as one of our feature articles at CigarAdvisor.com, and then you can be in on, on some of the extras that right. went into making that happen. Now, let me just say one last thing. Yes. The humidor can be replaced, but the cigars can't. Oh, they, oh, and they were not in it, thankfully, so uh, there we go. I hate when my whole thing just disappears off the face of the earth. The uh, this the happens to me all the that's why you take now, I just want to say real quick, <laughs> our good friends of the uh, heavy metal band from the New Jersey Spitball Parade. Yeah, they're a bunch of wise guys. Yes, they are wise guys, but they asked me when I said I could talk metal, he's asking me, Anthrax Slayer or Testament? Let me talk about Testament. Chuck Billy and Alex Skolnick. Oh, now, 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 you can talk about Alex Skolnick, can you not there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pulo? To a degree. I'm, 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 not a, I'm not a huge Testament guy. What you know? I, I have I have an appreciation. There you go. I believe there in the Old Testament. So now, yeah, Gary, <laughs> I like the Old Testament. Gary likes like the Old Testament. The New Testament. Testament isn't as good as the Old Testament. Well, and Old I'm Testament. talking about the metal band. He's talking about the friggin' Bible. Yeah. So the go Old ahead, Testament's Gary. the original. Yes, because <laughs> everyone on here wants to talk about the Bible today. Yes, of course. The, the <laughs> Cigar, Cigar Advisor Bible Studies? Cigar Advisor Bible Club. Yeah. We'll be starting at 4.15 right after this. So check <laughs> in. <laughs> and we'll talk about uh, what, we ate, what we ate on Easter Sunday. Six, six, six club. And uh, Gary will be talking about the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament. Nope, we're back. Uh, and we're back. And we're back. And Everybody. I'm also watching that. some cowboy doing shit in a traffic stop. That's pretty weird. Yeah. Do I, have to I don't know. I'm, the page? I'm live. So it is what it is. Yeah, we're back. We see Tommy, but the cowboy's not. Facebook and the FDA just got him. He sees Tommy. <laughs> he looks sick. No, I'm still seeing comments. So I got it. I got it. We're on. This, this is like a hostage video. Blink if you can still see us. Uh, so, hey, oh, look at that. There I, I, there's a very pixelated me. So, all I'm right. Uh, John Fennell, when a cigar has a tight draw, there what is go. the main issue? Gary. When it has a tight draw, what is the main problem. issue? And actually, Robbie Van Weingarten has the same, pretty much the same question. He's been smoking cigars about eight months. So when you run into a draw, a, a cigar with a tight draw, are there any tips to correct this? So what are the main issues? Well, and how do you issue, correct it? All right. For the main issue when a cigar is that tight, it means it's a virgin. Okay, that's the number one. Oh! Then, uh, no. It wow. means, uh, wow. well, right. you know, this happens sometimes, and what happens is sometimes a stem gets in there somehow, or they've just rolled it too tight. And what you can do is, you can uh, use a cigar poker. I, I have this little thing here, okay, this is, this is a professional one that John has, and it's just like a long nail, and you just basically poke it into the head or the foot, depending on where you th might think the problem is. I usually start uh, at the head. and. Um, you want to be very, very careful because, as you can see, a sharp object like that can uh, you can put a hole in your cigar. So I have this thing I got from the bar. These are like skewers for the olives, I think. And I think that this cocktail, thing works really great. Yeah. Cocktail skewers. So that's so what you I use. You can get a free drop poker when you order a martini. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can. That's yeah. nice. So that's yeah. how I do it because I'm cheap. But so uh, I usually go. I get, I, I get it from his proctology. I get it in bulk. I buy a bottle of vodka and a, and a box of skewers. But that's really the main thing. It's usually just just poor poor rolling. Well, it can be something else, Gar. Yes. May I say? Sure. Uncle, hey, uh, of course. Uncle camera guy. Humidity. Humidity. And John hit that on the head. Sometimes the cigar is way. You've kept it way too humid, and it's too moist, and it's not going to draw. So it's just wet. And like we always said, try to burn wet leaves. See how that works out for you. It's kind of the same thing. So Gary's right. Too tight is usually the main culprit, but too moist. <laughs> Say it one more time, and moister than an oyster. And uh, oh, yeah, Raquel an Welch will that. fall out of the moist. ceiling. So I hope someone says moist again. I oh, just did. Any so, friend behind it? So uh, too. I'm not going to say it again. John, another question. Okay, so uh, this is a good one. And uh, Rob Berryhill, when you get a cigar that you do not like. 
Do you power through it or do you get rid of it? Fred, oh. do you Depends. power through it or do you get rid of it? Depends on how much I don't like it. Now, if it's early in the cigar and it's just kind of muddled, not doing anything, sometimes I'll give it to the second, third, and then I'll see if it's a little better. But if it's like just unsmokable, if it's a taste nasty, just not, there's no, there's no time. Life is too short to smoke crappy cigars. So I just ditch it out and get something better. There you go. Okay. I, would, I would agree with short. that. You would agree with that? In fact, uh, I asked that question on our question of the week uh, last month. And uh, what I did now, sometimes you can be surprised, like yesterday, right, Fred? Yes. I was saying, I was smoking a cigar, and I yes. said, you know what, this isn't doing it for me. Frank goes, I smoked that cigar yesterday. Give it some time. It, mm -hmm. In the middle, it, it, it's, you know, it should get good. And he was right. It got a lot better. So be patient, and if it's still not doing it for you by you know, the second, third, just, it's not worth it. Like Fred said, it's not yeah. worth yeah. it. it it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to suddenly go full fireworks at the end yeah. if it's been mediocre or lackluster for yeah. two-thirds of the way. Uh, yeah. So I agree with these guys, but at least give it, like Gary said, give it a chance. You know, it you know, might develop into something. You know what the other thing is? A lot of guys, you know, some cigars are expensive. And you know, you say, I spent eight, nine bucks in this cigar. You're aware. Right. I don't want to throw it out. There's an investment into it, yeah. I will, uh, I will stand by that. If I spend more on it, then I'll probably <laughs> try and yeah. force myself we'll to enjoy it a little more. Let me just mention that uh, Bob Soden says, Zycar has a sweet multi-tool, as does Fred. And uh, I, I do have as my dad, daddy, -tool. as my daddy yeah, told me, that multi, to that multi tool is more for just going tinkles out of. So Actually, my dad, I, I do have the multi tool. It's yeah. awesome, the Zycar multi tool. This thing is the coolest thing ever. It's got a bleeder and a we got a bleeder. Opener. Oh Jesus Christ! Here we go. Wow. <laughs> And and be, Franks and Beans, Beans and Franks. We got yes. a bleeder. Yes, oh, I've seen that movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something about Tom, Tommy got his hairstyling tips from that film, actually. Oh, the I hair did. gel. I the did. hair gel. You should talk about hair gel. And it's oh actual hair God. gel, though. Yeah, actual yeah, yeah. hair gel from <laughs> an elephant. He uses man gel. From an elephant. Something about Tommy. Yeah, something about Tommy. Something about Z-Man. Uh, <laughs> you know, Tanner asks, what's the best way to introduce, introduce cigars to a newbie? That is curious. Now, I just did a video about that, didn't I, John? Yeah, sure did. I did a, if, if you go to uh, YouTube and look up Cigar Advisor, go to our Cigar Advisor page, I have a video done maybe a couple months ago, so just you won't have to go too far back. And I do a whole like two-minute video on the best ways to get newbies or your friends who maybe are interested in cigars to get them into it. That's all I can say. Check that out. So just go to Cigar Advisor on YouTube, and it's a, it's a really good explanation. So I won't get into the whole thing. Um, what else we got, Jan? All right, so we got... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Actually, Ryan Colvin and Sean Baudry both asked the same question, ironically, about the same piece of equipment. And it's very odd because it's not a very commonly seen item. What could that be? Ryan said, did you guys ever try the cutter that puts five slices into the cigar cap? You can't remember oh. the name of it. It's called the Shuriken Cutter. I and Sean said, what are your thoughts on the Shuriken Cutter? He bought one to try. The wrapper fell apart. Is this common or is his mouth too moist, LOL? Well, moist, 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 moist. We just oh, happen to have a Shuriken right here. Ah. And this is a metal one. This is nice. Yeah. Um, so I, I had I had the, Gary, one of the originals, which Gary's is plastic. All right, so this opens up. Shirking. This can be used as whatever. And um, okay, inside, okay. inside you'll see the little ashtray. In it, yeah. Yeah. Inside you'll see there this are blades. There are one, two, three, four, five blades. Yeah, five, no, six, six blades. Look at that. They're very sharp. Don't put your finger in there. <laughs> yeah, nice uh, because they really are sharp. So now here we have a uh, Lord Blackbird. Uh, Connecticut. Now, he said that the cigar, the wrapper got messed up? He said the yeah. wrapper came apart. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate this. Now, this is a Connecticut wrapper. He probably, I would, I'm going to guess that his cigar had a Connecticut wrapper because Connecticut and Cameroon are very delicate. But we're going to try it. So what you do is very simply place it in the middle and just push it, push it down into the blades. And, ah! and then you take it out. Now, I don't know if Ryan, you can see that. Now this one actually survived pretty good. Okay, can you see the little mm -hmm. little um, slits that it made there? Now we're going to try to uh, draw test it, and it's not bad. It could be a lot better. It's not not Does that great. Come up on you? But 
No, but it is starting to come off. So it probably works better on Maduros or cigars, oh, Habano right cigars that have a little thicker. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. It's kind of a neat thing. It's kind of a conversation piece, and it does it does work. I had this another version of it, which which actually worked pretty good at the time. But I just I didn't find it to be consistent. So. Um, Anyway, but check it out. I mean, if you can find one, and you know, it's just great to have in your collection. You know, if anything else. There you go. Well, very good. Now, if, uh, just a reminder: if this is for anybody who just came in recently. This is our giveaway today. It's a mini Avo speaker, it's, you know, you could and this speaker is a USB port yeah. thing, and it's a really cool yeah, little it's item for your desk. Yeah. And you can win that by putting on screen what is your favorite cigar of 2018. Write that on screen. The contest is still open for another few minutes. And I know we have more questions. I don't know, John, did you see the yeah. question Bob Soden just asked? That's a really good um, That's a cool name. Soden. Oh, do we think that, uh, do you guys think that a drink pairing can pull out the different flavors of the oh. stick? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you kind of answered your own question there, Bob. But uh, <laughs> yes, insofar as there are certain ways that a cigar will complement the flavors of a drink, and there, were, there are certain ways that a cigar will kind of fill in the blanks and, and dovetail with the flavors that are, are, or, are or are not in a drink. So like you might want a cigar that's a little bit peppery to go with mm -hmm. like a, a, a rum, yeah. because you know some rums have a little bit of a bite to them. Mm -hmm. You might prefer a cigar that's a little sweeter to go with something that's refreshing, like maybe a mojito or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now Gary, I know you're kind of an expert on rum, as far as, yeah. especially with cigar pairings. So what do you, what do you like if we were to use rum as an example, well, what what kind of flavors do you look for? Because there's that, that molasses kind yeah, of taste I, of the rum. What do you like to get? Do you like to do pile on more sweetness, or do you like to go with some other well, flavors? I, you know, like my cigars more on the sweet side, sweet spicy, and um, so I find that the a very um, long aged dark rum an añejo uh, tends to bring out a little more sweetness in a cigar that's maybe not as sweet. And uh, it also bring out some more of those woody flavors and things like that. Depends on how it's aged, what brand it is, things like that. But yeah, I, I really like rum. It's kind of traditional too. Right. Yeah. So. so there you go. So you know, you, you kind of experiment. And somebody else had commented that you know the wrong drink can totally ruin a good cigar. So it is a process of trial and error. Or know, or find somebody who knows a little bit about cigars and knows a little bit about drinks too. And, and especially if they're different people, and find out if it's a drink you've never had before, you're not really familiar yeah. with. Because I don't know shit about rum, right? But okay. you know, I, I, but I know there's not a lot of vodka drinks that you really pair with it because it's not yeah. great. Well, it's kind of neutral. Yeah, it's kind of neutral. neutral. So I like vodka. The, the point is, experiment, and then talk to your friends at the bar, or the cigar lounge, and they say, "Hey, this this smoke was really good." And if you've never had that cigar before, but you know it sounds like something. That would go with your drink of choice and give it a try. Now, you, you have a whole it. series on pairings and mojitos coming up. Yes. Right? As a matter of fact, mojito just got published. So, if you go to cigaradvisor.com, we have how to make, we have, it's they're one minute videos on how to make about seven or eight classic, classic cocktails. Cuba Libre, which is a hell of a lot more than rum coke if you do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Havana <laughs> recipe in Bloody there, there's Mary. a Dark and Stormy, there's a Bloody Mary. So mm -hmm. we get a whole bunch of the way they make it over here at Leaf Cigar Bar. The secret recipe, the private label <laughs> recipe, we do it. And then we've picked a cigar to go along with it and we tell you why. So if you want to see how that drink is made and you want to see what cigar we've paired it with and why, then go ahead and check out that video series. It's straight up at CigarAdvisor.com. Yeah. We also have a, a cigar pairing guide too, which if you That's go right. to... Uh, Famous smoke dot smoke dot com slash cigar dash pairing. And Corey just put the link up too. Uh, you can go ahead and work your way through different scenarios. If you you know, we can recommend something for you through the uh, recommendomatic nine thousand, and that'll work just as well. Uh, who just asked? I, I just missed it. Uh, oh, uh, Giuseppe asks, what are some odd things that pair well with cigars? And that's an interesting question. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, lime jello with strips of bologna in it. So okay. when I'm, whenever I'm dining on that delicious taste treat, I will. Uh, that it goes great with cigars. Uh, I think old. Don't, I, don't I think, invite Tommy to your picnics. No, I think old shoes. If I have an old pair of shoes on, that pairs extremely well. Anybody else got something odd that pairs well with a cigar? Irish soda bread. Irish, Irish soda, soda bread. bread. You're lying through your teeth. What was that stuff? I just saw it in the store. Oh. The cola. The, uh, the 
Huh? Well, I've heard of. It's, it, it was like you wrote a bottle. I've heard of people. Cheer wine. Yeah. Cheer wine. That's it. Yeah. Cheer oh, wine. yeah. Cheer wine oh, is like, like this weird cherry yeah. soda. We and we found a couple of bottles of it over at uh, Wegmans because uh, yeah, that's what I saw. There was another. There was another cigar site that uh -huh. had said that the notes were reminiscent of cheer wine, <laughs> and basically it's a it's a cherry flavored soda that's about. Half carbonated it's, and it's very syrupy and, and kind of. It's made of, more for barbecuing, I think. Is it? Yeah. It's gross. Sauce? People add it to their sauces. Oh, oh really? Yeah. People add like a lot. People add sodas to their sauces all the time. Oh, especially, okay. Yeah, That's especially like true. ribs and stuff. Because I gotta tell you what, I, it is. Yeah. It is not my favorite. Uh, <laughs> I would not. I would not. I, 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 I have read though. No, 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 not very. I have read ice cream. Especially chocolate ice cream. People will have ice cream with their cigars. And That's it goes to pair very well. Yeah, a lot of people talk about Dr. Pepper, and somebody actually just put that up there, too. Well, yeah. Yeah. let me say that Karl Mark Mayberry asked what pairs good with a Moscow mule. I think a uh, toothless one-legged hooker from Minsk would pair very well with a Moscow actually, mule. A, Mos a Moscow mule is what? That's Vodka, basically ginger beer, beer and, and lime. So that's, that is a Cuba Libre with vodka instead of rum. Rum, yeah. You know what's amazing? So Fred, well, Fred may be 12 years old, but he knows his alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He really does. <laughs> My parents were having me, uh, you know, making cocktails behind the you bar. Are, you are He's at six years old. The original Moscow Mule, right? Talk about broke the lock of the liquor cabinet, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you remember the time Fred told me when he was 10 he was drinking a cream de mint mix mixed with Mad Dog. <laughs> and uh, he threw up for five whole days. And he went down to 16 pounds. Ten, right. We'll talk about that on another show. Right. Couple more questions. Right. Brian McNulty says, what do you do for smelly cigar breath or are you all single? And actually, uh, he, he commented later, and, and Brian, you, you heard right, chew on fennel seeds for cigar breath. That is a great really? cure. Yes, yeah, so a smelly cigar breath, uh, you, I mean, you can load up on the Altoids, but the, the fennel seeds are great, because I, I think they do fennel seeds after Indian food, too, right? Huh. Is there really? Yeah. Yeah. Things, they make toothpaste made with chili. With chili. Is there, chili there's also. a toothpaste made with that kind yeah. of, so, okay. Never tried fennel But, uh, you know, the, the, I'll the, eat an apple. Fred likes an apple. Tried and true, brush your teeth or use a tongue scraper, too. Yeah, yeah. Or I, I brush my tongue. I did yeah. that last night. I, You know, it, you never know no, why, but sometimes you get <laughs> bad. You have to get the hair out. Is that what you said? Yeah. John, don't make me take my shirt off. Um, you know what? Every once in a while, you just get bad cigar breath, and you don't know why, and you just can't get rid of the taste. Uh, I brush my tongue. I put toothbrush on it. I just scrape the crap out of it, and literally... And it uh, freshens you up. And you want to get way back in the back. You know, I hate it to be doing this. I'm sorry about that. You don't want to... Next question. A couple more, and then we'll go to a winner. So Harley Ann can vindicate me here. Fennel also yeah. soothes stomach aches and reflux. That's true. I can attest to that. So yes. there you go. That's, so, I used yes. to give that to my it's son. It's very good. It was uh, colicky. Yeah, what, about, yeah. fennel. what about fennel? Jock very good. Will fennel work on jock itch? Yeah, but they hurt. But they hurt because you got to rub them in the really jocks hard. The jocks said that will punch you, you know, a couple of yeah. times first. There you go. Oh. Garth Bugenhagen wants to know Z, what two goaltenders have scored during a game? Hey, man, uh, you said pre 70s hockey, Gary's Trail of Women, and, and well, Metal. I know. So, I know that's that's Ron it. Hextall is one of them. And uh, I'm trying to think of who the other one is. Is it Clint Malarchuk? I'm not sure, but I know Ron Hextall of the Flyers was one of them. You're he was, names yeah, up. Yeah, it no, up. I am not making names, names, names up. up. Clint Malarchuk played for the Buffalo Sabres. He's the guy. Like you, Howard and now listen to me, listen to me. Have you ever seen the, the video of where the goalie gets his neck cut, sliced, yeah. and there's like a pool of blood, like in the entire half of the ice? That's Clint Malarchuk. That's Grabs his movie, neck, right? skates off the ice, almost died. Yeah. I don't know if it's him, but I definitely know that, Friday the 13th, it's, right? uh, uh, yeah. that Ron Hextall was the first to do it. Somebody back me up on that. Yeah. There you go. Steel Fe and then there's Steel Fez Malarkey of the Cal uh, Calgary Flames. Steel <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Wow. Uh, Giuseppe, who is your favorite movie or TV character who smoked cigars? Well, well probably Groucho, of course. You know. Okay. Tough one. Uh, TV character? TV Tony Soprano. Oh, Tony Soprano. Good one, Fred. Yeah. I'm going to go with Archie Bunker. Okay. Always had a cigar. Yeah, though. get me. It doesn't matter. It was cheapy. He smoked cigars on the air, which you will never see <laughs> anymore. I also liked. Oh, what the hell was that show with the uh, Bacula, Scott Bacula, with the angel, with the 
with the little oh, yeah, computer yeah. Uh, when Quantum he sent Leap. Quantum Leap. He right. always had a cigar. Uh, Peter Falk always with a oh, cigar. Yeah. So oh, what do you say, John? Uh, I was, I was, Columbo was the first one that came to mind. Uh, but Klinger was good. Remember Klinger from yeah. Bash? Well, no, not was, uh, a Klinger. It was Klinger's Rizzo. Uh, Colonel Potter. Rizzo. Colonel Potter. Potter. Right? Colonel Potter. He had the best Colonel Potter. Man. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sam Hill. Wilfred Van der Werf. Is it possible that a cigar in the United States is sold in Europe under a different name with another band? Wow. 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 That's a, that is a good question. There's another band like Testament there is the Slayer. There is English market selections. They're made for different markets. Testament is called Old Testament. Um, <laughs> they both have different packaging as an English market selection. A lot well, of companies, like, especially rapper. like Royal Mar the Monterey and stuff the like that. Yeah. That um, It'd be packaged a little differently. No, I, I don't know. If, uh, I, I would like to ask like Nick Perdomo or somebody like that. I mean, in Cuban I, I tobacco so. is allowed in, obviously in Europe. So I don't, I don't know what the you know, rules. I you know what? If if you're well, listening, if, if you're, you're listening to, to like Cuban cousins, like like the Kilhibas yeah. that are sold in like Britain, England, versus the Kilhibas sold in America. The, you know, one's Dominic, one's Dominican, and one is Cuban. So you will yeah. see that the different companies well, I think completely. He's thinking is you know like is we're smoking the, the Avo Synchro Nicaragua today, right? right. Yeah. So nice uh, Dominican cigar with the Domin with uh, Dominican Nicaraguan right. and Peruvian tobacco, great smoke. But is it called something else overseas? I, mean, I don't think so. I don't we know. Don't I don't so. think so. I mean, I think one thing I will say. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what that country's rules are in terms of you know how the FDA says that we can't use the word mild, for instance. Right. And you know you can't <laughs> use the word natural, or you can't use the word organic. So they'll have to call it something else, depending oh, on what those context. countries or what the EU's uh, restrictions what, might be when it comes to. What about Placencia cigar, the organic? So the, the name has to be changed. Really? The name has to be changed now. Uh, I, uh, I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it's it's not the Placencia cigar. Yeah, it's something else. 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 Couple more. We've got All some right. good questions. That's why I'm going to expand. I'll give you, I'll give you three more. Today. Rich Diaz, best music to listen to while smoking. <laughs> what, <laughs> whatever you like best. Uh, Heavy blanket metal. There it is. Metal. Slayer. Stop. Marion De Silva says, Gary, I'm going to see Aerosmith next month. What should I expect? Aerosmith. A lot of Steven Tyler sweat. Really? Well, I'm, I'm not the biggest Aerosmith fan, but uh, I, I know they do a great show. I know they from, do from a great people show. I know have seen them, so yeah. I've never seen them. I'm sorry, Mary. Um, hits. Lots of hits. And uh, occasionally, I don't know that they've done any new stuff. And uh, Although one thing, it's been a while since I've seen Aerosmith. I saw them half a dozen times back in the day. Yeah. Uh, they do take a nice opportunity to go ahead and let Joe Perry shine and do some Joe Perry project stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh. Just like one or two songs. Can but I, that's enough. Can I tell you quickly about Because I think that's all they're off. <laughs> I saw, I think it's 1982, Diary of a Madman tour for Ozzy out in Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. It was right after Randy Rhodes died. So I think their first guitarist that replaced him was Brad Gillis. Little metal action there. But one of the warm up bands was Def Leppard. But the first warm up band was Joe Perry Project. They had sound and equipment problems the whole half hour set. The mm -hmm. fans booed them off the stage. Joe yeah, Perry terrible. was booed off the stage at the Nassau Coliseum. Uh, Def Leppard was the high and dry album. And it was a rough crowd. It was a really rough crowd. A, a rough crowd. Ooh, you're okay. You're all right. And I saw Ozzy. Ozzy, many times. I've seen Shocking. Ozzy. With Randy Rhodes, I saw Ozzy. Wow. That's right. Right. Okay. So, and to answer your question before, the Placencia Reserva Organica is now just called Placencia Reserva, both here and internationally. And okay. yeah, there are indeed different names for the same cigar in some brands in some countries. Uh, there are blends that have multiple names in the United States. Same cigar, different brands, sometimes different brands from different vendors. So, it's still a little gray, but the short answer is yes. Uh, and one more, Eric Icorn wants to know, guys, your opinions on humidity beads versus Boveda for a 1,000 to 1,500 cigar size capacity cabinet humidor. Wow. So one of those big ones. Oh, well. What do you use, Boveda or humidity beads? Uh, I'm gonna, I, I know what I'm going to say, but you go ahead. Well, hopefully I'm, I'm going to say what you're going to say, which is if you have that many cigars, you need something like a cigar oasis. because. You know, you got to need an electronic humidifier because you want to make sure everything gets. You would have to buy a lot of Boveda packs because it's one pack for every 25 cigars. I mean, they have a 320 gram 
Under twenty gram counts, still, but that's well, still that's not true. enough. That's still, big, that's still not enough. Now, you need a you need a bigger. Yeah, I, 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 I think he's not going to cut it. No, Gary's right. If you've got a humor that big, I'm going to go with like a twelve foot strand of anal beads. Uh, they yeah. absorb the humidity tremendously, and you just take uh, it. Well, you do. You take them out of your humidor wah, one at a time. Wah, wah, wah. Boop, boop. Serious. So no. I'm always serious. What the, what that guy so, said right there. Yeah. Never, never, you know, like, never mind the bead stuff. Pay no attention yeah. to the Pay no plane. attention to the bead monger in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, uh, the, the cigar, cigar oasis. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, believe doesn't Zycar have something like that too? Or there's they have there's, one, a, there's a couple they different. They have one for uh, like seventy five. Uh, seventy five count. No, they have a. Zycar, no, they have a fan, which is also yeah, good to have. And what's another one? The humid, the humid air, I think, right? Isn't that that big one? Humid air is the one you see, the commercial one okay, you see in the stores. Okay, but for 1,500 cigars, still, I mean, you yeah. could probably get away with using one of those. Yeah, that's that's so, but Cigar Oasis has yeah. a unit for just about every capacity. So, so there is, we do sell Cigar Oasis. You just do a, si a site yeah. search on famous-smoke.com for Cigar Oasis. There's a couple of different options for you there. There's also one called the re uh, Humid Air that is, like Gary said, used for uh, more right. in industrial and large scale or commercial right. applications. But if yeah. you've got a 1,000 to 1,500 count cabinet yeah. humidor, you're much better off going with something like that and something that constantly monitors your humidity. Yeah. You know, like I said, Zycar has that, uh, and Cigar Oasis has one too, that they go ahead yeah, and they'll give notifications to your phone or to a remote, yeah, like a remote desktop type of thing either through an app or through a piece of hardware and that way you can keep an eye on whether or not it's getting too humid or too dry in there or, or too moist as Tommy has been liking to say. <laughs> and Berto is specifically likes the boop boop comment. <laughs> so. You're a boop. boop. Alright, so that's it with so, yeah, questions. You know what? Did not get to your question, that's okay. Keep asking. We go back after the show. We answer as many questions as we can. So apologies if we didn't get to it in real time, but we will go back and answer all the questions when we're done. We will not move. Absolutely. Uh, we went a little longer with questions today because you guys asked some really good <laughs> questions. And while we do get asked the same stuff a lot, and that's okay because new people are coming in all the time, um, you know, like Kong asks Sello on, Sello off. Well, we've actually shown up at his house and uh, shot his porch light out every time he asks us that. That's what we'll do with Kong fam. So we, before I give you the winner of this beautiful little speaker, uh, I am going to tell you about a, a couple of Cigar Advisor uh, articles, and one is the one we were talking about, John, that dropping the humidors off the roof, if you came, guys came in late, we have a thing on, um, you can go to CigarAdvisor.com, or you can see it on our YouTube channel, where we tested uh, travel humidors, different sizes from small to big, and tossed them off the roof two and a half stories up into a, the concrete Nobody and saw hurt. what happened to them. And a little spoiler alert, the 32 count big guy, it was unbelievable how that held up. So, But then there's a real big one that we kind of uh, upset Gary with, so well, you got to go watch it. Things got a little carried away, shall we say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when yeah. we were testing travel humidors like this, and whether or not that they'd be able to withstand the impact of going off the roof of the famous smoke shop building, mm -hmm. and then... <clears> um, like I said, things got out a little bit out of hand, and Fred got overzealous with the equipment that we had. So if you'd like to see what happens, yep. go to CigarAdvisor.com, and you can check out the video for yourself. There you go. And, and the other article, uh, one that I wrote this week, is uh, a very disturbing article that you guys have to read. It's uh, the 10 worst cigars from the cigar boom back in the 90s that are making a comeback. Now, these 10 cigars have skirted the FDA issues and uh, they're grandfathered in and they're making a comeback and these might be the 10 worst cigars ever made so you need to read this article to stay far away from them. the first one if you want to show close up here is El Stupido and if you look at the confused look of the uh, guy's face on that band that's one scary looking psycho Polish man and uh, serious that cigar caused brain damage so that's the problem so if you read you're gonna learn about the moon grown about the the cigar grown the tobacco grown at night uh, and that's real the Polish hat dance which was my uncle Stasha's favorite and then here we have Pero Loco which means crazy dog so would you want to put a hot steaming crazy dog turd in your mouth I don't think so so that's it go to cigaradvisor.com and you're gonna read about 
uh, the Tanwar cigars from the Boom, and we're going to probably give you a few suggestions of what might be better than that. And then we've got throwing humidors off the roof. John, mm. uh, you want to tell them about the uh, special on Avo Nicaragua one more time before I tell the winner of this? All right, so Avo Synchro Nicaragua. And here's the thing, nice, slow-burning cigar. I haven't even reached the yeah. band yet. This is a Toro. It was a 6x52. Oh, yeah. Mine is... I got more left than you. Yeah, yeah. It's Cuban press. It's really so nice. Cuban press. Beautifully done. Nice slow burn. It's uh, made in the Dominican Republic, but it's a, a three nation blend Dominican, Nicaraguan, and Peruvian uh, box press. And it's got uh, uh, an Ecuador, Connecticut wrapper on top. And our bonus today is if you buy a box of Avo Cinco Nicaragua, four of the six sizes, because the deal doesn't apply to cigarillos and the deal does not apply to the special Toro Tubos. But if you buy the straight up four different sizes, you get yourself that speaker, plus an extra four pack of the Toros like we're smoking today. Wow. Uh, roughly a $100 value. You buy the box of Avo Synchro Nicaragua, you get that whole schmear free. Whole schmear. Whole schmear. <laughs> free. Like cream cheese on a bagel. Like a that. whole schmear. Indeed. All right, so now Give we're going to give away. Baby. We're going to wear this really cool speaker, and I'm going to tell you who won that because we have the countdown now, and I'm going to tell you it's the first woman to win a prize. She said Southern Draw of Sharon Lynn Sarah was her favorite. Allison Trainer has won the Avo speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Allison rock on. She has some good questions today. Made some good comments. And there you go. Allison, awesome. All you gotta do is send us via the the Cigar Advisor page. Send us a message and tell us your address. And I think we need proof of age because the FDA makes us do things like that. But we'll tell you, Fred, we'll tell you all about that if you contact us. And I want everyone to congratulate Allison, our first female awesome winner. And that's, oh, wow. that is great. Um, we get some girls on the show and... and uh, we love it. Yeah, we do love it. We love girls. Mm, Fred likes girls. <laughs> there you so, go. There you go. Girls. So that's do, that. Do, guys, do, Any, I think do, that's do, it. Girls. I think that I do. If you remember the uh, Motley Crue video, Girls, 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 one of my favorite. Yeah. Which one? Girls. 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 Yeah. Girls. You want to hear something interesting? If you're looking to load up, because up, if you're, if you're near us, right? See, the sun is out. The weather is breaking. It's getting nice. Yeah. Your humidor may have been languishing. Mm -hmm. It's time to stock up on a lot of cigars. Uh, they said, hey, you should talk about this killer coupon we have. $40 off your purchase of $200 or more. Wow. So load up your cart because it's better to pay cheap than pay full price. Right. So $40 off $200 or more. There is a coupon right on the home page. Just click through famous-smoke.com. That's on top of the $100 of free stuff we're giving away with the Avo boxes. Wow. Some restrictions apply, but shop. Have fun. It's Hulo good. Is, good it's and good fox, for you. I Who else a real fox? That's it. You know it, baby. That is it for our show for today. Number fox. Every, uh, um, can't wait to see what I look like. Every, no, no, stop doing that. Every Wednesday, except for when there's like a monsoon or a monster, uh, <coughs> some monster snowstorm. Tornado snow. So I got a leprechaun. That's it. I'm Tommy Zima. John Pulo. Gary Cord. Fred Lunch. See you next week. We're going to see you next week. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central, 12 noon Pacific. Tommy Zima signing off. The live for the Cigar Advisors and famous-smoke.com. Oh, Metal Rules.